Christmas is a time where families reunite, share a delicious Christmas meal together, and share gifts with family and friends. But the true meaning of Christmas lies in the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. This is an important festival for Christians. So joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Gavin Ashenden, former chaplain to Her Late Majesty the Queen, to shed some light on it. Uh, first of all, welcome and happy Christmas, Dr. Ashenden. I understand you are going to be back on air in just under an hour in the GB News Christmas special. So we'll go into greater depth in that show. But for now, what did you make of the PM's Christmas message? Hello, Calvin. Happy Christmas. Thank you very much for having me on. It's great to do this together. Well, I was, I was annoyed and embarrassed by it. I'd, um, you know, we go out of our way to wish Muslims happy Eid and uh, the Hindus happy Diwali. Uh, it's the birthday of Jesus. Is it too much to ask that since half the country is Christian, we might respect Jesus in some kind of way? He's, he's the most extraordinary figure in the whole of human history. He's utterly captivating. His influence on people has done the most wonderful good. Why, why would you ignore him? It, it just seems rude to me and, and a bit narrow-minded. Yeah, it, it was an embarrassed Christmas message, wasn't it? Have you noticed a greater shift away from the word Christmas with universities, celebrities and politicians choosing instead to say happy holidays? That's right. And we should really call people out on it. If they're going to claim to be uh, diverse and imagine that everything should be treated equally, um, there's no harm in that. We can celebrate that. But it's equality for everybody except Christians. Uh, it's respect for all religious figures except Jesus. Uh, it's it's a it's a, a favoring of institutions, but not the church. Um, we should really tell people that their, their hypocrisy is unwelcome and and it's unnecessary. But there's so much to celebrate in Christianity. It's the most wonderful faith and the most extraordinary experience, and it revolutionizes society. Why this constant diminishment? I think it's because people are afraid of it. Why indeed? Is this an Americanization or is there something deeper behind it? I might, I might suggest personally that they can't say the word Christ. That's why they're avoiding saying Christmas. I'm, one of the, my rules of thumb is, is one asks practical questions first of all and then theological questions afterwards. Ah. I think practically one of the things it does is, is people are anxious about being constrained in their personal preferences sexually uh, particularly and the fact is christianity has a very strong and powerful sexual ethic which is extremely good for society and when you get rid of it all the evidence is society becomes more decadent but the other thing is that that, that we are we live in a spiritual battle we, and, and all that means i think is that one can see that good and evil are fighting against each other and particularly in the human heart and i think what it means is that people are afraid of the good uh, and there's a sense that that somehow to, to mention, you know, Jesus is only ever mentioned as a swear word. Why is mm. that? Why do you never heard people people using other religious figures' names as swear word? Why is it only Jesus? I, I strongly suspect that this is part of the um, toxification of the soul and that people are being got at by evil and they, they simply don't know it, but they should listen to themselves and ask whether or not something's gone wrong, that they can only treat the name of God the compassionate, the, the, the kind, the forgiving, the all-loving, uh, with, with, surrounded by F-words and cursing. There's something spiritually wrong as well as, as well as intellectually. So let's talk about the good. Let's talk about the true meaning of Christmas. Can you summarise it for us? Yes, I, I think I can. Um, uh, being alive is a very strange business. What are we doing here? Where did we come from? Where are we going to? Uh, is, so the first question is, is there intelligence behind the universe? And what, what Christmas tells us is, yes, there is. Uh, is there meaning in the universe instead of meaninglessness and chaos? Yes, Christmas says there's meaning. Um, is the meaning well disposed towards us or not? It could be like the, uh, uh, like the Norsemen and the Vikings where, where Thor was a really quite brutal god. Christmas says, yes, uh, the, the intelligent meaning is immensely well disposed towards us and has come to find us, to love us, to forgive us, and to remake us. For people struggling with a sense of low self-esteem and wondering what they're doing in life, and particularly how they can overcome uh, ethical and psychological issues like, like forgiveness and hope, Christmas has all the answers. Jesus literally has all the answers the human heart needs. But the problem is that people don't hear about it. They don't hear what he teaches. They, they, they hear him only as a swear word. They don't read the Gospels. And the church has been so bad and, and, and ashamed at telling people about who Jesus is and how an experience of relationship with him can turn one's whole life around. And having turned one's life around can turn society's life around. We can see this all the way through history. 
You're right. You're right, absolutely. But we shouldn't get a victimhood complex about this because we know that the Christian faith thrives under persecution. And now that we are a minority faith in this country uh, and intolerance towards Christianity is growing, surely that means that the country will be returning to its Christian roots, will it not? Well, the astonishing thing about the faith is that it's exploding all over the world. It's exploding in Asia and in, in China, um, enormous numbers of Christians in China uh, and, and in Africa. The only place it's having a hard time because it's being discriminated against uh, is Europe and America. Um, but the extraordinary thing about Christianity is it meets the needs of the human soul. And, and in fact, the more Christians are persecuted, the more the presence of Christ, who is absolutely lovely in terms of forgiving enemies and turning the other cheek and always overcoming hopelessness with hope, becomes evident. So the fact that we're under the cosh a little bit and that people are um, closing the sort of doors of opportunity to us in society simply means there's a greater opportunity to talk about Jesus, to honor him, to love him, to serve him, and to reach out to people who, who actually live in some kind of fog of darkness still, uh, which involves not exactly self-hate, but, but self-recrimination. Uh, they're longing to be set free, and it's our job to tell them they can be set free. Absolutely. And from our heavenly king to our earthly king, uh, what values should King Charles III take on from his late mother? Well, I'm delighted that he wants to uh, be caring for all faiths. Um, that's a hospitable and broad-minded and generous attitude. But the faiths don't have the same values, and so you, ultimately you have to choose which one is better. Uh, his mother had a very vivid experience of Jesus, uh, which marked her whole life, and was was partly why she was such a vivacious and cheerful person who attracted so many people to her. So what Charles, I'd recommend very strongly that he learn about his mother's relationship with Jesus, about her prayer life, about the way she put him first, and was the way in which she was not ashamed to be his disciple, even though she was a queen. He, he, could, um, he could do very well from learning from something of his mother's genuine, authentic, and life-giving faith.